Another thing that I wanted to touch on is black people that have Eurocentric features. Mm -hmm. So you've got people in East Africa who have soft hair, you know, European noses, as mm -hmm. they say, um, thinner lips, apparently, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this is like a pretty privilege assumption thing? Because people do say that, oh, East Africans are pretty because of this reason. Uh, I mean, the... <sighs> Eurocentric, I mean, Africans were the first humans on Earth. So anything that has come after that is African derived, right? So to say that a thinner nose is a Eurocentric feature is a idea that Europeans have written themselves into history. They have now become the, the dominant administrators of the world. And so that they say that their features are a particular way. But if we all came from Africa, then surely that they're African features anyway. But yes, there is definitely a, an idea that if your hair is, you know, longer, if your nose is thinner, if your lips are thinner, then you are going to get a particular set of privileges based on who is running many of the industries, whether it's, you know, the local bank and the, or the air hostess. Well, they hire people who look a certain... Yeah, there's a criteria for uh, everything, yeah. Exactly, right? And that criteria is not by accident. Somebody has created that. I think it is perpetuated by the idea that um, being uh, whiter is being closer to God. Because now you have... Uh, religion has been a really big factor in this. And you can drive around Ethiopia and get in any taxi and look at the, the where the tax disc is and there's a picture of a white Jesus in the taxi. Right, that's a fairly normal thing, but it's the same in Congo and it's the same in Ghana. Right, you have the you go into most churches, and in most churches in uh, Ghana, in Congo, you have some sort of white deity with a thin nose and 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 long hair. Right. So, what do you think those people will say if you told them Jesus was black? Do you feel like, would you think they'll say, oh, white is a godly color, so therefore Jesus is white? Well, I mean, honestly, I think that. Uh, there's two types of history. There's biblical history or religious history, and then there's actual history, right? So it's it's ironic how every time you know I go to a museum, I see people from Kush, I see people from Kemet, I see ancient, you know, the pre preservations of a ancient people from and and uh, artifacts from uh, Ghana and and uh, Nigeria and all these places, and we have you know, these things that have withstood 5,000, 4,000, 3,000 years of, of the world and humans existing. And I can't find one bone of Jesus Christ. I can't find one lock of their hair. I can't find anything, right? And so what we get is we get this whole history that we are told. And that's why I don't particularly agree with religion, just because religion is what you're told to believe and spirituality is what you experience, right? So if you're told to believe that you have to be light to be closer to God then you're going to start to believe that and because of that you're going to start to bleach your skin right if you're told to believe from a child because we don't give our children a chance a lot of the time if your family is Muslim or your family is Christian your the children in those families will be that and in the Caribbean community we have the first kind of big family gathering that a lot of children experience is a christening where they are Christianized I went to Cape Coast in Ghana and Cape Coast uh, to, uh, to I went to a particular place called Almina Castle and Almina Castle is where Africans were held as prisoners of war and and uh, tortured as um, slaves before they were then taken across the Atlantic Ocean to be then sold into South America, the Caribbean, North America. And it was ironic because there was uh, slave dungeons where the people were held, 400 people in a room about the size of this, right? Uh, maybe 300 people and they were defecating, urinating on top of each other. They weren't given proper food. A lot of them died in there and got disease. But then they were cleaned up. They were taken upstairs. They were taken to the church. They were Christianized. They were christened or baptized. And then they were stuck on the ship and sold into slavery. And now we still do that normally like it's normal because i'm not talking about the orthodox christianity that they have in eritrea and and in ethiopia i'm talking about the catholic and the protestant christianity that they have forced on the rest of the world and this is now what we think is you know to be closer to god so yeah there is definitely a a standard that has been created and is kept in 
a particular sphere by all of these uh, media houses, by all of these um, magazines and, and all of these ideas of beauty. Because if you look at the, the women who are praised as the most beautiful women on earth, this very day or the most famous women they are all women with fair skin and thin noses and maybe not thin lips but if you look at kind of the top four famous people in north america right now famous women should i say particularly is cardi b cardi Jenner. well <laughs> cardi b she had a lot of surgery to try and look black but anyway cardi b kim kardashian uh, rihanna and beyonce and what do they all have in common they all wear weave right all they're all fair skin mm. and they all fit a particular narrative right that's not by accident that all these it's not like women who look different aren't are less beautiful but we push these women as almost you know deities of of human godliness and it makes me re feel really sick but uh, you do think they're beautiful though don't you i particularly i think that every single different ethnic group of people have beautiful people you can't say that kim kardashian and the rest of them aren't you know are representations of beauty but because that's what you're looking up to in real life in real life that's the type of women that's your standard well, it's not my standard because no, you'll see me with a dark skin sister with natural hair there's, there's a lot of internalized self-hate as i said after slavery there was no therapy so a lot of people, even though they might now be rediscovering themselves, when I first started to look into African history, I was like, oh my God, Egypt, and we were kings, and we were queens, and it was amazing. But a lot of us weren't. We were farmers. And, you know, a lot of us weren't, you know, uh, buried in, in tombs with pyramids above us. But I, I was, look. the only reason that I went to go and look, because I was being, it was being like, it was amazing. The history seemed amazing. It seemed like, something that was to be celebrated and now you're celebrating african women uh who are darker skinned publicly yeah. hopefully that is going to permeate into popular culture whereby actually everybody just starts getting judged the same but yeah you'll get a lot of brothers who'll say dark skin dark skin dark skin but then won't be with a dark skin sister personally i will be with a light skin sister a sister of my same complexion and i'll be with a sister who is darker skin and you know, it's not really about particularly... Personally, I'll never be with a European woman, right? So that's not even... A, like, if, if I was to get with a European woman who is doing what a lot of European women are doing, where they're making their lips fuller, they're trying to get hip injections, they're trying to get all kinds of surgery to try and look African, they're trying to dark, darken their skin, tan themselves, at the same time as society is telling us that Africans aren't beautiful. It's like the same thing with hip hop. It's like hip hop is only kind of uh, acceptable or accepted when you start putting an M&M there or you start putting a white face on it. The same with a lot of things. It's like it's not accepted until you get, you know, a white raster man singing reggae and then all of a sudden it's accepted. And that stuff happens regularly. Um, I do think that there's a, there's a lot of hypocrisy with social media, but social media is fickle, you know. At the end of the day, you know, uh, it's a for a lot of a lot of social media is a 24-hour feed, mm -hmm. and a lot of what's happened today on social media, people forget about tomorrow, and it'll be something different because the same the same discipline that Africans had, generally speaking, when we we were able to run our own countries for our own country for our own selves before the underdevelopment was happening. Yes, there was feudalism. Yes, there was clan wars. Yes, there was slavery. Yes, there was a lot of problems in Africa. But now African countries have been underdeveloped to the degree that 69% of the world's poorest people live in uh, mo most poorest people live in countries that have a, an abundance of gold uh, minerals, oil, gas, and that's not by accident, right? We now a lot of us we don't have the the discipline and the uh, I would say focus to be able to organize ourselves the way that we were organized when we were able to build massive kingdoms, when we were able to build, for instance, pyramids or massive stilos and long you know straight roads and big walls and all of these things that we know there's a history of mm. now what do we build in the west we build an athlete's career or we build you know uh, uh, a body and an ig account 
we're not actually building a, a nation. We're not building any. That's why I really believe in Pan-Africanism, because at least when you have Pan-African thinking, you're thinking, well, wherever we are and we're African, we're building together, whatever it looks like, because the people who are the dominant groups of humans on earth they work together to be able to make sure that they can organize the world's resources for themselves and if we are just commodities so if we are just being bought and sold and now we still are called african women we call a uh, african woman's backside a booty right some of the first pirates on the seas were europeans and europeans were going around stealing what africans they were called africans their booty right now we still call african women booty because african women have never been free they're still the bottom of nearly every single facet of society and that's the the, the whole conversation comes up about intersectional feminism is like it's feminism but it's not really for you african women it's like feminism for us mm. right and so it's very complex being a human being in this world whereby you know, you, you are told one thing, but a lot of people do something different. So you might have all these brothers on social media saying, yeah, I'm riding out for my sisters. I'm here for my sisters. And then they get a girl and she's light skin or they put a girl in their music video and she's light skin. So call, call them when people are on, on, you know, when people are talking nonsense, uh, call them out, call them out and say, yeah, but by the way, like you might say all of this stuff, but I saw you down the street with Becky with the good hair. So. But You're emphasizing on um, Jesus being white or, you know, angels being white. And whatnot. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I don't feel that that contributes to any colorist or racial issues that are happening today because it's like you know in my house i'm orthodox mm -hmm. i've got pictures of you know well my family have pictures of you know different saints and angels mm -hmm. some are brown mm -hmm. some are white how many are dark skinned black ha um, half of one it's maybe two not a lot but you know there's still some but i feel like obviously in general we're gonna mm -hmm. link white to being a pure color that's where we're gonna we're gonna obviously like you know think white represents pure white represents happiness white represents luck especially in my culture there's a lot of superstitions mm -hmm. you know oh it's dark outside oh this girl is black there's a black cat there's this and that but it doesn't like you know could you imagine being a black cat and everybody just running away from you that's not fair on the black cat <laughs> like the black cat the cat got born with melanin it got born intuitive it can feel the emotion and then everybody's like no 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 because look at language for instance black male black bold black book and then look at weddings white wedding white pure white and it's like but it doesn't have anything to do with in my own world i just feel like it's just a superstition that's been created like white being yeah but 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 black but being bad luck but your subjective world isn't the objective reality right so whether or not you think that right the fact still remains that most of the 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 most looked up to religious leaders are white or fair-skinned or light-skinned right whether or not you believe it to be true it has not been created by accident that a lot of the saints and a lot of the angels are fair-skinned or white like that was done on purpose somebody did that somebody went mm, do you know what? i'm gonna make everybody white today and that's gonna be how it's gonna be forever if you look at the soil the soil the best most fertile soil is black volcanic soil and everything comes out of the blackness, right? You genuinely believe that Jesus... You come out... I, I genuinely don't really know whether Jesus existed, right? But if he did exist, yeah. then given that area of the world, then I really do believe that he couldn't be like fair-skinned like Yeshu because he would bun to death out there. <laughs> so, so I, I, you know, you've been to... Uh, well, I don't know if you've been, but uh, Jerusalem... Uh, those are areas of the world they're not like it's not it's it's not a cold area of the world and if you look at the places that have the most skin cancer the place the people that have the most skin cancer australia south africa it's not by accident those people was not supposed to be there the way that they're there they're there now and you know because they can't cope with the sun properly they're being punished for it by by the nature I, you know is 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 a ridiculous to think that people have still argued to this very day right for instance the the movie um gods of egypt or every time they make a movie about ancient egypt right 
every single person in that movie who is a king or a leader or a pharaoh or a queen is white and everybody who is a slave or a soldier is black and then they want to say that they were involved with the building of Egypt as in fair-skinned people not that Egypt wasn't a massive metropolis and there wasn't many people going through there but the people who built the pyramids the dark skin uh, Nubian because it's an original Nubian country those people you know had built up this this uh, they built the pyramids and then by the time the, the invaders came, the pyramids were already ancient by the time that they came, but then they want to shoot off the noses of the Sphinx and then say that they built all of this stuff and they were involved in all of, in all of this stuff. Then you go back to Europe and, you know, they couldn't even build a teacup or, you know, a, 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 small, a small house and yet you have pyramids. So it's like, what do you want? Are we, are we brilliant and are we amazing or are we uncivilized and are we savages? But you can't have it both ways.